Hi everybody, I'm Brad with Big Family Homestead, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how we made our Earthbox style self-watering containers for our garden. So let's get to it. So before I get cooking and show you these self-watering containers, I would like to take a second and thank you guys. You guys have really been amazing and, and um, for me and my family in this time of grief, uh, the comments have been so kind and your prayers have been coveted and gratefully received. Please know that we are just so, so grateful. Um, I've never had anybody close to me pass and so this has really been a whole new ball game. I've never a lot of emotion going on, you know, and, and you have your good moments and your bad moments and things are up and down and then some little thing will trigger you off. And But right now I'm having a good moment. So I decided, well, shoot, I'm going to go ahead and get to doing what I like to do and what my mom liked me to do. And that was helping other people figure stuff out like this. So without any further ado or do do. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, basically going to show you how we put our earth box style uh, self-watering containers together. Now, it is kind of deceptive in a way because they're not self-watering. You do have to put water in them. What, it's, what the real deal is, is that there's a reservoir of water that your plant and the soil can take up what they need as they need it. Uh, so you don't have to water as often. It creates a really, really nice... Um, warm, warm soil so that the plants take to it really, really quickly. Another positive of the, uh, the uh, self-watering container is that you can move it. It's really easy to pick it up and move it. If, if things aren't going good in a certain area, too much sun, not enough sun, you can pick them up and move them. Or say that, let, let's say you live in an apartment and you can't go out and, and till up the backyard or whatever, maybe there isn't a backyard. This is something nice that you can go ahead and have your blueberries or whatever in there and take them with you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you basically uh, um, the five that I put together and then we're gonna get to a, a diagram of how we put them together. And uh, well, you know, let's just get going. So here are my earth box style self-watering containers. Made five of them. They cost me about eight bucks each to make. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And um, I'm looking forward to some really good yields out of these guys. Uh, my dad down in Florida, like I was saying, he was getting massive amounts off of his tomato plants. And so I'm gonna show you how we put them together and hopefully that will give you a clue as to how to do yours. So basically what we've got here is this is our watering tube that goes down through. This is dirt here and then there's a shelf here that has basically a uh, cup that goes down into the uh, water reservoir down here. Now that way the water gets filled up in the reservoir and that cup, those cups act as a wick that sucks the water up into the soil as it's needed. And so if I fill this up and it gets too much, it will overflow out of here, right there, out of those water holes right there. So for the shelf, inside the uh, earth box self-watering container shelf there that the dirt sits on, basically you take your lid and you cut it out right in this groove here. Now, uh, be warned because you need to use like a, a jigsaw or something like that. My genius son, who is a teenager and clearly knows much more than his father, yeah, he uh, was, using his pocket knife to cut it out. And I would, I literally, it was so crazy because I literally said, make sure you're cutting away from yourself. I don't think you should be doing that anyway. Use the jigsaw, but no, he's a teen and teens are clearly, clearly smarter than, than their parents. So he cut his finger pretty good. Fortunately, we had some super glue on hand. Bam, done. Forget the hospital, right? Anyway, so, but this is how you do it. You basically cut out in the edge and some of these containers are straight on the sides. The sides of the container are straight and that's a lot easier to work with, but we like these Rubbermaid ones because they last a really, really long time. Well, that means you've got to cut the groove to fit the inside of the, um, the container so it fits down in there. And what we did, because there's gonna be some actual um, tiny little gaps around the inside of the, uh, the container, is we just basically put some duct tape in there to cover the edges like that. We put the duct tape in there like that. 
And the reason why that I'm not so worried about it is it's we're, we're just probably, we're, we're trying to keep it from getting the dirt down into the reservoir. Some of it will get in, but it's really not that big of a deal. You just wanna keep out as much as you can. So my dad who lives in Florida swears by these things. He says he's getting huge, huge yields, 40, 50 pounds of tomatoes out of one plant. And another, another one of the things that I'm seeing as a positive of these earth box, uh, self-watering style container gardening things is that, well, number one, you don't have to weed it. Uh, number two, it's not as labor intensive in terms of bending over and having to deal with whatever's going on. But another thing that I think, this is the one I really like, is you can really pack those plants in because you're gonna feed it with worm tea or some other natural fertilizer. We prefer worm tea. Check out the video, it's really great. The host is very handsome. Anyway, uh, but the worm tea, and, and we're actually gonna put some worms right in there. We're gonna feed them. Uh, that's gonna be another experiment that I'm gonna try. But uh, basically, they're getting all the nutrition they need, so you can really jam the plants in there and put, put much more, um, much more, uh, well, you'll, you get more yield out of it. Let's say it that way. You can really get them in there tight. So those are some more positives that I really, really am excited about. I can't wait to try it out myself. My dad is getting just crazy, crazy. He, he's, got a, a, he's got one of these container gardens completely under a porch that only gets sun maybe an hour-ish a day. Yes, it's Florida, but he's got um, beans. Like He's got eight bean plants in one of those boxes, just like the ones that I showed you. And they have trellised all the way up to the ceiling and they're going that way to the, to, and they're just, oh my gosh, beans are all over it. So I'm excited about the yields that you can get out of these things. Okay, so here's a picture of the inside of what one of these uh, self-watering containers is like. I did mine slightly different um, because th this one has holes all around here and I, did, I chose not to do that. Mine is solid. I'm gonna show you a different image, but I wanted to show you the different styles people are doing. Now these, for mine, I used actual cups and I've got several holes that I'm gonna show you. There are several holes punched into these cups and then I have some other cups, the same cups that are turned upside down underneath it, holding that shelf up. So basically I've got one, two, three, four, five cups that are upside down that have holes in them so the water can flow in that reservoir underneath. And then these two are more centered for mine. And basically that way the water can flow in and then the wicking, the, the wicking of the water up through the soil happens through these cups. I don't have all these holes, but I wanted to show you a different view on these things because other people do, do them different ways. And, and um, this is my first time at it. I'm copying what my dad did and he's getting great results. But here's, this is basically the inside. There's your water tube, goes down. Uh, now it doesn't sit flat. You, could, you notch out a little notch in the bottom of this so that the water that goes in can flow out. Now this picture, which is slightly more blurry, sorry about that. Uh, but basically found this, but it's, it's more of the style that I have. These are basically wicks that go into your growing medium, and then you've got a water supply that goes in there, and that's kind of more how mine are. Now for the shelf that the growing medium sits on inside the self-watering containers, we elected, and the wicking, the wicking part that basically sucks the water up through into the soil, we elected to use El Cheapo cups like these from the dollar store. And you can get them for three for a buck. And we used basically seven for the whole project because what you have, if you can envision, you've got your shelf, right? Like sitting like this. And I've got five of these corner, 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 and then one in the middle that these all sit, that shelf sits on there. We drilled a bunch of holes so that the water in the reservoir can go ahead and flow freely through this. But then for the wicking, now imagine that, right? This is over here. You've got another one, a cup just like this, that's inside that shelf, that cutout of the top. Now, the soil goes down in here. There's several holes in this thing. And so all that water, goes up through and gets wicked up through the soil. Pretty cool, yeah. So once again, I wanna thank you guys for your thoughts and your prayers. Please keep them coming. We are uh, in flux, a lot of change is happening and 
like I said, you know, you have your good moments and bad moments, and I took this good moment to uh, say hi to you guys and hope that you're doing well. Anyway, I'm Brad with Big Family Homestead. Please don't forget to pass the video around, like it, subscribe it, and uh, you know, share it with your friends. It does really help our family out. Check out those earth boxes for yourself. They only cost me eight bucks to make it. Now think of all the vegetables that you're gonna be able to get out of there and healthy stuff, right? So anyway, have an amazing day. Go, 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 tomato. Yeah.